Good afternoon. My name is Samantha Coleman, and I was born in August of 1852 in Painesville, Ohio, to Morton Waite and Philene Bell Waite. I was the second oldest of seven children and one of three daughters. Previous to moving to Oregon, I was married to Cicero Rice when I was 15 years old, and we lived in Bloomington, Michigan, Bloomingdale, Michigan. But I became a widow a year after we were married at the age of 16. I decided to move with my family to a farm in Douglas County near Round Prairie, Oregon from the Midwest. I was a school teacher in Myrtle Creek throughout my 20s until my second marriage to E.H. Coleman in July of 1885 <clears throat> and after which we moved to Forest Grove in 1889. Edward attempted to make a living by establishing a winery but since I was a staunch supporter of the temperance movement I ended up destroying the vineyard and declared his career as a sommelier over. In the meantime I began to follow the pursuits of Abigail Scott Dunaway and became a suffragist in 1888. I had a child in 1900 but unfortunately the baby did not live. My profession was in the field of agriculture where I raised bulbs for gardening. In November of 1912, women won equal suffrage in Oregon, and this was celebrated by local supporters and my receipt of 76 complimentary votes for mayor of Forest Grove in 1913. However, O.M. Stanford won the office with 345. Continuing to pan the campaign for women's rights in January 1920, Oregon became the 25th state to ratify the 19th Amendment. Forest Grove observed that 100, 100th year celebration of that victory in 2020. I would be remiss if I did not mention my friend and fellow suffragist Myrtle Peace Hatfield, also of Forest Grove, who worked tirelessly for women's suffrage and the rights of children her entire adult life. Myrtle was born in Newton, Iowa in 1873 and moved with her parents to Albany, Oregon in 1899. In 1905, she began teaching and concurrently became a corresponding secretary for the state's Equal Suffrage Association. Myrtle taught for five years and then took a job as an investigator for the Boys and Girls Aid Society and traveled across the state of Oregon looking after neglected children often living under more harsh circumstances than her own. Myrtle was one of well-known suffragist Abigail Scott Dunaway's delegates in Tacoma, Washington, where she helped with the suffrage movement. At one event she attended, and where Abigail was the keynote speaker, the newspaper headlines read, at Tacoma meeting, fists are shaken, hats disarranged. In her book, Pathbreaking, Dunaway wrote, the smoke of the Battle of 1910 had hardly cleared away before Miss Peace met me at my house and where she and I together prepared the full text of the clause in the state constitution to enfranchise women, which is now part of the fundamental law. When Myrtle was 37, she married Charles Lauren Hatfield, a retired merchant, in October of 1911. And they moved to Forest Grove, where she became a much welcomed member of the Forest Grove Women's Club. However, Myrtle's story did not have a happily ever after. On the evening of March 14, 1913, Mrs. Clinton Peace found her daughter Myrtle, who lived right next door to her, gasping for breath. Unfortunately, Myrtle was not to recover from whatever it was that struck her down and she died on March 19, 1913. Her death was so sudden that it warranted an investigation for which a jury had to be called. In the morning, morning Oregonian of March 22, 1913, the fires of suspicion were fanned when Mrs. Joseph Lee remarked that Myrtle had said a few days before her untimely death, she was afraid to remain alone with her husband. A week later, it was decided the cause of death was unknown and her heart had ceased to beat. Dr. F.A. Bailey of Hillsboro assisted Dr. Yenny of Portland and Coroner Barrent concluded that there was no foul play involved. 
Abigail Scott Dunaway wrote of Myrtle Hatfield, whose quiet, tactful work among the voters throughout the state are more deeply indebted today for enfranchisement than to any other agency in all our ranks. Myrtle was also deeply missed in her new adopted town of Forest Grove. Unlike Myrtle, mysteriously dying at the age of 39, I lived to be 87 years old, but neither of us left any living children.